Hi, this is Jason at Menlo. So a uh, quick demo here for you to look at and uh, see what we do here with isolation. So um, very quickly, you can see I'm using Chrome. I'm also using our Risk Analyzer browser plugin to enumerate some of the background information here. So uh, one of the top 10 media websites in Denmark, very helpful to help people understand what does uh, go on in your browser. So extrablade.dk, not sure about the pronunciation, but that's now 185 pieces of JavaScript from 37 background sites. So coming closer to home, Daily Mail, just fetched this morning, uh, 106 pieces of JavaScript from 22 background sites. So uh, yeah, is that a major problem? No, but that's a lot of content from a lot of background providers I didn't ask for. And um, other than using browser plugins to stop that, I don't really have any control. So now let's move to isolation and fetch this content via um, Menlo. And here we can see the page looks and feels the same. It's rendered the same. It's got the same headlines. Importantly, I can copy and paste. I can print. I can do all the things I do normally in my browser, except now, as we can see at the bottom, there's only one script from one background site, which is obviously Menlo. So all of that content, all of that noise in the background is converted into safe rendering instructions, with me, which means we get the user experience without the risk. So um, here's CNN. Similarly, here we are with it being fetched uh, directly 100 scripts from 37 background sites exposing my browser to 70 CVEs. So, um, so now if I do that same website um, through our platform, I'm just using our prepend mode just to make it easier to jump backwards and forwards. One script, one background site, but again, I can navigate the links. It all works smoothly, no change to the user experience. And again, Key point to highlight is why is isolation really nice and easy is that user experience, that copy and paste function, uh, which we don't have in um, VDI type solutions. Um, let's pause that as well. So another website, just for another example, the Scotsman, 123 pieces of JavaScript. 123 pieces of JavaScript from 41 background sites. So another example uh, where we can talk about using web isolation. So blocking of uncategorized is kind of the norm in the industry with most customers. So uh, a website that one of our team went to this week, um, madbishopandbear.co.uk, um, categorized as uncategorized, um, so it would be blocked for a lot of organizations. So if we did go to that website directly, not that there's anything suspicious or not, but it's probably new, not been around long, and not had time to be picked up yet. 17 pieces of JavaScript from seven background sites. So again, is it risk? I don't know. Does it look malicious? Possibly, possibly not. However, if I go to the same website through isolation, I get the same look and feel, I get the same user experience, but obviously again, isolation converts all of that background content, removes the risk, but preserves the user experience. And more importantly for organizations, is it's allowing safe access to content that would otherwise be blocked. That means that, yeah, as a business, you can get on with more exciting things and not focus so much on blocking stuff anymore. So um, another use case we're gonna talk about is flash conversion, is converting flash from risky flash into safe video. So here's an example with the Bloomberg website where they serve up flash video content. So what we're going to do is now fetch this content using the isolation platform, where we're now gonna convert that flash video into audio and video stream that gets repackaged into HTML5 video wrapper so that you can play it natively in your web browser and uh, you get the content. But again, we look at that page content, there's no JavaScript, Sorry, there is JavaScript. There is no flash video content being played. So again, what we want to do is help customers move away from having to rush for those patches to Adobe Flash, uh, turn off flash on the browser, but still enable users to get the content. 
So uh, another, another good use case for isolation is um, documents. And a uh, big threat vector continues to be weaponized documents that can be downloaded and executed in my browser and um, obviously uh, compromising my users. So uh, what I want to do is now do a search but convert. So I'm going to download a file, a PDF file on the subject of Premier League 2017. So let's see what happens here. So it could be completely random. I'm going to choose one of these links um, at random here. So Premier League Queensland. We're going to download that PDF into a container in our platform. We're going to then pass this through our um, HTML5 conversion process and now expose that document in a safe format where the users can now interact, get the content, but without the risk of... Um, from a PDF file perspective, heat spray attacks uh, and other types of risks that, that are still prevalent with attackers. So I can also now only allow my employee to interact with this document in the container if I was going to be highly risk averse on this exciting uh, Lawn Bowls document by the looks of it. Now I may also allow them to download a safe version of this PDF file. So in the example here, we take the PDF convert it to HTML5 and then re-export it into a safe PDF file, removing all those scripts and other active code that could be injected inside it. Or for small groups of users for websites that you do trust, you may choose to download the original and allow them to download the file because it has macros and other content inside. So I think it's fair to say that for 90% of the time, you wouldn't need the original files for 90% of your employees but it's that 10%, it may be less, where it's known sites with the original documents that you will need to download and the platform does cater for that. So then nearly there, a couple of more things to show you is the evaluation and assessment of JavaScript. So um, here's a little site we've put up that just has an example of the abuse of JavaScript. So when I fetch this page, what you'll see is that my browser just downloaded an executable file directly onto my file system, but didn't pop up a, a dialog box asking me. So if we take a look at the page source on this uh, web page, here's the reason. Uh, is a JavaScript function here, which is basically provide this function on download XE, and here's a base64 encoded chunk of data which now gets repackaged as the watchsport underscore codex.executable. So um, here's the problem here, is obviously no web gateways are able to, in real time, determine what's actually going on. So now if we try that same website through isolation, what you're going to see, hopefully, is that JavaScript might help if I use the right tab, of course. So let's go through our platform. We're going to fetch that content through our platform. We're going to run the JavaScript in our platform. We're going to see what comes out of that. And we can see that there's an executable file created that's trying to be dropped onto the file system. At that point, our platform is able to say, this is an executable file. The policy for JSON to get this file is, he's actually not allowed an executable. So again, Having this decision where JavaScript can play out and uh, just watch it run enables us to actually understand what, what truly is the outcome of some of this active code running in our browsers. And then the last component, which links back to email and spear phishing, is connected to the web. But what happens when I get an email that comes in from the internet? How can I protect and use isolation for this? So here's an email that's come in to my inbox it's a tiny URL, so it's been shortened. It's, it's, it's not going to be possible to make a decision, is this a good or bad URL? I will have to go to this web page, see the redirect, and watch what happens when I end up at the destination page. So what could possibly go wrong with that? So we're now going to load this URL. It's been rewritten, and uh, that enables us to open the URL in a safe container outside of the device, off of the network, and immediately use isolation to protect the browser from any drive-by attacks that may be already embedded on this web page waiting to compromise the, the visitor. So that's the first benefit here is drive-bys are removed. But 
The second value here we can provide is some additional education and awareness where we inject some information, education, so that in real time we can coach your employees about what to do, does this site look suspicious, here's a link to our policy, to give them time to pause, reflect and think, does this site look important, does it look like the same website, is it possibly bad? Now if we make all those decisions and think about it and say actually yes, you'll notice we get to the third point which is I can't enter my credentials. So the page has put in an anti-phishing mode right now by default according to the policy set which means that I can't give away my credentials. So I can now move from read only into this read write mode and interact with the web page having had time to pause and reflect to think does this look like the original website or not. And you can see I can now enter my username and password. So there we go. That was a very quick demo. Hope that was useful. Thank you and goodbye.